Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and WandaVision spent the holiday dropping promos faster than Fruit Clothesline by Wanda's Baby Bump. There's a ton of new footage to break down from several promos since our last trailer breakdown, with visual clues and easter eggs that are easy to overlook. Yes, it's a new year, and I am now in an even smaller blue dungeon, a true pocket reality mind prison to keep me focused on churning out videos, videos faster, faster, but, but with itty bitty living space, kind of like a, a dog kennel. If I make a mess, I gotta sleep in it. Because if Darla can be housebroken, so can I. Oh, oh she mm, spoke too soon. So let's break it all down, starting with the latest trailer, the one that dropped January 4th titled New Era. This trailer features a nifty sitcom theme song. Wanda oh, this is gonna be a gas! This was composed by Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez, the songwriting duo behind Frozen, Coco, The Book of Mormon, and Avenue Q. Apparently, they've composed unique sitcom theme songs for every decade the show's gonna feature, so we can probably expect one in the style of Jesse Frederick's late 80s run of the ABC sitcoms that were, of course, did Full House, Family Matters, Step by Step, and Perfect Strangers. I love the jump cut as Vision and Wanda's wedding rings flip onto their fingers. The edit is a bit sloppy and janky the way productions used to have their actors freeze as they reset between takes, as we saw in Bewitched in I Dream of Genie. It's charming. Ah, <laughs> charm. Later shots and colors show that Wanda's center stone here is red, a ruby reflecting her as the Scarlet Witch. Wanda finds a toy helicopter in Technicolor, a shot similar to something we'd see in Pleasantville. It is numbered 3003, which is too close for I love you 3000 for me to just ignore, but this thing has a sword logo on the front. Front. Whoa. So at first I thought this was just like a remote toy from the outside that accidentally skewed into the pocket reality to give Wanda a clue that this is all BS, kind of like Truman finding that crash stage light. Instead, I am now thinking this is that full-size helicopter that glides past the red staticky pocket reality wall in the other footage, but then gets absorbed by the pocket reality and transformed into this toy. That might explain how sword agent Monica Rambeau ends up as a sitcom supporting role. Maybe every agent sword sent in there gets assimilated into Wanda's sitcom reality. Every vehicle or weapon transformed into something harmless, the way the reality stone warped Drax into blocks in Infinity War. Wanda and Vision perform a magic act in a talent show in front of Wentworth's department store. <gasps> Maybe a nod to Deidre Wentworth Superior from Cap's Battle with the Femazons, later head of Hammer, or just the, the name of a local department store. The store behind Wanda is just mops, so I'm not sure how much thought was put into these storefronts. Agnes leads a standing ovation followed by this guy. Wanda and Vision seemed confused by the reaction as if they maybe really didn't earn this win. Maybe they screwed up their magic trick, but this mindless crowd praises them anyway because the script says that they win. The front table shows this woman in a donkey costume, probably another act, looking like, well, they beat me fair and square and I have no bitterness whatsoever. The guy with the mustache sitting with her appears behind Wanda in some other footage of her in modern clothes so I'm guessing all of these town residents flash forward with Wanda in Vision through the decades. Now, on to the beekeeper. We saw this guy in the December trailer. Now he is climbing out of the sewer, bees swarming around him. The back of his suit has another sword logo. We could be looking at another pocket reality transformation, like the sword agent is in some kind of protective jumpsuit, but then the reality warped that suit from the outside to something like that of a beekeeper. But you can somewhat more clearly make out this guy guy's face, especially if you brighten the shot, but from what I can tell, this isn't anyone else we know to be in the cast at this point. Wanda envisions tandem bike ride, takes them past Adler's fresh produce and seafood. Oh, another name, another possible match to Marvel Comics where pretty much every name already exists. Irene Adler, aka Destiny, a mutant precognitive who can accurately predict future events and wife and partner to Mystique. I don't know, folks, maybe this bubble reality warps all of reality within it so that mutants exist there, and then when that bubble bursts, mutants will exist all over the MCU. Now the movie theater behind them is playing Oz the Great and Powerful, which is a weird anachronism for the live action Disney movie that came out in 2013, whereas this reality seems to be set in the 70s, though that movie was directed by Sam Raimi, director of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which Wanda Maximoff is confirmed to come back in, speculated to be the villain. Also, so 
Oz the Great and Powerful is a story about a magician trying to sort out a good witch from a bad witch, a motif that seems to be continuing with Vision in his magic act and the good and bad witches of WandaVision, Wanda and Agnes. They wave to Monica Rambeau who's sitting outside M and B Hardware. Maybe B is a person M, Monica, runs the store with. Ooh, but before I continue, a quick word about the really big news from our merch store, the Epic Hero Shop. We had a lot of fun with our first shirt in the latest Obsession line with our Mandalorian inspired This Is The Way shirt. The limited run of that shirt sold out and that design is now locked up in the blue dungeon for all of eternity. But we have two new WandaVision inspired designs that we are super excited about. These shirts are unlike anything we've done before and really unlike any shirt I've ever seen. I mean it, these shirts are the next level bonkers cool, just like the Disney Plus series inspiring them. We will be revealing the designs this Friday in our first episode of the Inside Marvel WandaVision After Show. Also, really quick, we wanted to let you know, yes, our merch is always available at NewRockStarsMerch.com, but that's in partnership with our Epic Hero Shop. And we've actually got very cool news from Epic Hero Shop itself that you're gonna wanna listen to. Those people that already clicked ahead, you're gonna regret missing this. Well, for everyone who stayed, I want you to know that Epic Hero Shop just launched a new mysterious, maybe nerdy, maybe funny, maybe who knows, YouTube channel, and is celebrating that with some giveaways of what? Oh, how about just a little thing called a Sony PlayStation 5 Disc Edition? Because we know we're all gonna try out our scratched up Rayman discs in that beast and see what happens. I'm pretty sure it's Rayman reaching out and slapping you with his creepy dismembered hand. But uh, back to that giveaway as Epic Hero Shop launches this new channel called Epic Hero Labs. They'll be doing multiple giveaways of not one, not two, but eventually 10 PS5s to honor the road to 100,000 subscribers. And it starts right now! You can go to epicheroshop.com slash giveaway or click the link in the description to enter and you'll see all the details there. But basically, following the various Epic Hero accounts gives you entries. It's that simple. Again, full details at the link in the description, epicheroshop.com slash giveaway. And we will be publicly announcing the first giveaway winner after the Epic Hero Labs YouTube channel hits 10,000 subscribers. So if you are over 18 and in the US or Canada, go get to entering. I'll be here waiting. Next, a close-up shows Wanda's twin babies in the crib. Presumably these are Wiccan in speed. Notice how one of them has a red mark on his forehead. Maybe it's a birthmark from Vision's Mind Stone, or maybe it's just the weird pink marks that show up on babies and then disappear when they turn into humans. Don't tell me babies are humans. They're just little flesh potatoes that start talking at some point. Agnes greets them in in the 80s set, other footage shows how this whole confusion will cause Agnes to kind of reset as if doing a second take in the middle of a TV show. Uh, that's a bad take. Why don't I um, uh, take that from the top? As if doing a second take in the middle of a, a TV show production. <laughs> Behind Vision are these bird paintings. We in the past have determined these to be a variegated fairy wren and a phoenix chicken, which both might be clues reflecting the caged birds of Wanda and Vision in this pocket reality. Vision, if you can see him, as the phoenix resurrecting. Once again, there's the shadowy outline in the pocket reality static border, and then a shot of their modern looking home warping again. Their TV switches from this modern morning talk show to what looks like an old timey sitcom. And look at that. They got a Nintendo Wii. They know how to have fun. Now, some new details from the other promos that I gotta point out. The January 3rd Signal promo gives a shot of the clock radio that Jimmy Woo tries to communicate them with. Wanda, 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 can you hear me? I find it interesting that there's no six on this clock face. Like there's a six on the radio dial, but not on the clock. Maybe it's just a clock design thing. You know, sometimes they leave numbers off clocks or maybe it's the secret to everything and there are already two sixes and if you were to have a third six, Mephisto would get Beetlejuiced into the room. Now, in the January 1st Visionary New Era promo, we do see this clock radio short circuit and then like reverse to normal. So clearly this thing is gonna break when it's used this way or as someone tries to prevent Jimmy Woo from contacting Wanda. And then there's a shot of Agnes reading from that same glamorous magazine brand, but a much earlier edition. Inside there is a special report that mentions a husband. And then on Christmas, there was the reality promo where Vision uses his super speed to catch a falling piece of fruit 
maybe setting up how one of their kids will be a speedster. A close-up of Monica Rambeau shows her looking in confusion down at her necklace, which appears to contain an upside-down cross. So metal. While some associate this with a satanic meaning. Mephisto. In Christianity, an upside down cross is a symbol of St. Peter, who insisted on being crucified upside down. There's also more of the flashback to Wanda's pre Avengers years at the Hydra base in Sokovia, which I believe could lead to a Pietro Maximoff Quicksilver cameo since he was there at that time. Wanda's warping wall also depicts that same Hydra base from Age of Ultron. Here, she sees the Mind Stone when it's still in its blue casing as it was in Loki's Scepter. Maybe we'll get some answers to that, because otherwise it was really just, oh, Marvel didn't know the Scepter would contain an Infinity Stone and they had already made it blue and they already had a blue one with the Space Stone and they just had to like pluck it out and make it yellow so it's a Mind Stone now. And then Bathrobe Wanda wearing her modern look staring directly into camera. Hmm, making me think this era might be based on Modern Family when characters do direct to camera talking head confessionals. A gimmick that they took from The Office but it kind of makes zero sense in Modern Family because like who is doing that documentary? I cannot wait to dig more into this show. All the Easter eggs, all the Mephisto theories. We are going to be doing our Inside Marvel WandaVision after show same day every Friday for the next couple of months. And as always, my Easter egg breakdowns coming out the next day on Saturday. And again, you can support New Rockstars by checking out our many great merch options at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow me on Instagram at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to New Rockstars here on YouTube for analysis and coverage of all the big stuff you missed. Thanks for watching. Boom!